Okay. So our, today we'll be building functions from functions and our objective is that students will be able to compose functions and combine functions algebraically. All right. Hmm. Okay. Oh, got a person coming in. There we go. All right. So. It's important to understand how functions can be put together. There are two ways we can combine functions. The first way is with algebraic operations. So what are the algebraic operations? Well, you know what the algebraic operations are. You use them many times. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We can combine functions by adding them together, subtracting them from each other, multiplying them together, dividing them with each other. The other method we, or the other way that we can combine two functions is with composition. When we compose functions, we plug one into another function. For right now, let's start with the algebraic operations. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? By the way, I'm almost done. Let me know when you're ready.
done. All right. Everyone else done too? Okay. Okie dokie. So we're going to start. So we are going to start with um uh, with the basic algebraic operations. And this won't take too long. This is a pretty simple concept. So let F and G be two functions with overlapping domains, or the technical term is intersecting for all values of x in the inter in the uh, overlap The algebraic combinations of F and G are all right. So Our options are we can sum, we can difference, we can find the product, we can find the quotient. All right. What is the sum of two functions? The sum of two functions of x is the first function plus the second function. to find the difference of two functions, of two function rules, we subtract the two functions. You can probably see where this is going. the product of two functions
to find the product of two functions, you multiply the functions together. And to find the quotient of two functions, you divide the functions. This is the only one with a bit of a twist. You're never allowed to divide by zero. So g of x, our denominator, can never, ever, ever be zero. So if there is some number that you could plug in to make the bottom become zero, then that is not permitted. That is not part of the domain. In each case, the domain is all numbers that are in the domain of f and g. So the domain is all numbers that are in both f and g, with the one exception being that g of that uh, the denominator is never allowed to be zero. So if there's a value of x that you could plug in to get zero, that has to be excluded. All right. <sighs> so what is our conclusion here? Well, to add two functions, you add the functions. To subtract two functions, you subtract the functions. To multiply two functions, you multiply the functions. To divide two functions, you divide the functions. It's all very simple. So, are we ready to see some examples? All right, no one will yell at me if I take this away. All good. All right. Uh. 
Okay. So, like I said, this is very simple. We're not going to spend too long on it. Oh. Hmm. So if we are given f of x equals x squared, and g of x equals the square root of x plus 1, We need to find, let's go ahead and try each of these formulas. So let's find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, f divided by g, and g times g. All right. So what is f plus g? Well, to add f and g, to find f plus g using the variable x, you simply add the two functions together. We know f of x, we know g of x. Oh, wait, something I forgot to mention. We also need to find the domain. OK. So. Well, what is f plus g? Well, we are adding x squared and square root of x plus 1. So we add x squared and square root of x plus 1. OK, that was easy. What's f minus g? OK, well, f minus g is f minus g. Yeah, it's really this simple. What is f times g? Well, there's f, there's g, so we'll multiply them together. Yeah, it really is this simple. And f divided by g is f divided by g. Now, something that we do have to be careful of regarding um, uh, division is that, remember, we're never allowed to divide by 0, ever, ever, ever. So it's important, and so it's important that we specify that, that uh, there is a value here that is definitely excluded. We'll get to that when we uh, get to the domain.
All right. And finally, g times g. Just a moment. All right, so finally, g times g. Well, g is, this one we can actually do a little bit, we can do something a little bit more interesting with it. <clears throat> so this is square root of x plus 1 times itself, times square root of x plus 1. But anything times itself is that thing squared. So we can simplify this a little bit. Oh, hey, and the square root squared is x plus 1. Or this, if, if you take a square root and square it, then you cancel it all out, leaving behind the contents of the radical. Neat. <clears> hmm. <throat> that said, this it is worth noting that there is a twist here. Remember, the domain of all numbers that, or um, uh, the domain is all numbers that are in the domain of both f and g, or our combined functions, excluding any any inputs that would cause the denominator to be zero. So. We need, so let's take a moment and let's find the domain here. Because we'll find that the domain occasionally has a little few twists for us. So what's the domain of x squared? Well, we can plug anything we want into x squared and we'll get a defined number, positive, negative, whatever. But the square root of x plus 1, that does have a restriction on its domain. I can't plug in anything less than 1 into or less than negative one into this function. If I plug in negative one, it's fine. I get the square root of negative one plus one is square root of zero. That's a defined number, a defined real number. But if I plug in anything less than negative one, say negative two, I get the square root of negative one or negative two plus one, square root of negative one. Ah, that's a negative square root, so it's not real. So the domain of this guy is all real numbers. The domain of this guy is all real numbers greater than negative 1. So the, and that means that the domain of the combination is what happens to be in both. In other words, your, most rest your restrictions don't go away when you combine functions. So let's find the domain of each. So this guy has the domain. So this has the domain all real numbers. This has the domain negative 1 to infinity. So that's going to be our domain. Just because we're allowed to plug negative numbers into this doesn't mean we're allowed to plug negative numbers into this. All right, now here, same thing. Or large, negative numbers larger than or less than negative 1. All real numbers, negative 1 to infinity. All real numbers, negative 1 to infinity. All right, now here's where things get a little more interesting. So this still has the domain all real numbers. This still has the domain of, uh, of, negative, of negative 1 to infinity inclusive. But there's an additional restriction. The bottom is never allowed to be 0, so I can't plug in negative 1 either. So I'm going from negative 1 to infinity, but I have to exclude negative 1 itself. So instead of a bracket, we'll have parentheses.
Now what about our last problem here? Now x plus one on its own has the domain all real numbers. I can plug anything I want into this. But the thing is, is that I got here from functions that were, did have a restriction on their domain. So since I got, so I care about how, about where I came from, not just what I end up with. So the domain is still negative one to infinity. I'm still not allowed to plug in negative two into this because I built it from building blocks where I couldn't do that. So combining functions never enlarges the domain. Should be more clearly a parenthesis. They can only make it more restricted. And that's really about it. To add functions together, you add them together. To subtract them, you subtract them. To multiply them, you multiply them. To divide them, you divide them. You just need to be careful of the domain restrictions. All right. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? All good. All right, so before we move on to comp function composition, um, uh, let's first, I want to show you this thing about restricting domain in uh, Desmos. Desmos is smart enough to know how to restrict domains properly. So let's go ahead and take a look at Desmos for just a moment. So if we go back to our board, we, ha we were looking at just for example, our g of x was the square root of x plus one. So here we can clearly see that domain. We're going from negative one all the way to infinity, no problem. Now, when I multiplied g by itself, I got um, uh, x plus 1, which I'll just go ahead and call that h of x equals x plus 1. Now, as you can see, x plus 1 has a domain of all real numbers. But look what, look what happens when I multiply the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. I wonder if Desmos is smart enough to do to do it this way. It is. Okay, so when I multiply the square root of x plus one times the square root of x plus one, even though I even though this ultimately equals x plus one. Because I built it from components, I built it from pieces that have a restriction on their domain, combining them still leaves that restriction. This is still going from negative one to infinity, even though it simplifies to something that goes from negative infinity to infinity. Does that make sense? All right. Someone's saying, not really? Well, basically, it's like this. Any numbers, 
any numbers that I'm not allowed to plug into things before I combine, I'm not allowed to plug in after I combine either. So here, I'm not allowed to plug in, say, any negative number less than negative one, because that would give me an imaginary, an imaginary output. I can't plug in, say, negative five into this. That would give me an imaginary. But when I multiply these together, I end up with something where normally I'd be able to. But because I'm not able to do it earlier before simplifying, I'm not allowed to do it after simplifying either. And Desmos is smart enough to show us to show us that graphically. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad I can help you understand. All right. Now, that is the that is the algebraic combinations. Now let's talk about function composition. All right. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. So, what exactly is function composition? Okay. So, say we have two functions. F and G. To compose the functions, You use the output of one function as the input of the other. To show it I said before that functions are like machines. So let's go ahead and envision these functions as machines to make this concept a little bit easier. So let's say we have some function. So let's say that we have some function uh, f. And we can plug x into this function, and it will spit out f of x. Okay. 
Now let's say that we have some function g. And you can plug x's into g, and it will spit out g of x. Now, if we use the output of one as the input of the other, then we can chain these functions together. The question, the real question is, what are we left with? Well, we're left with the results of taking G and plugging in F of X. G of F of X. So we are finding the outputs of one function and plugging it into the input of another. Okay, so let's go ahead and give a more technical, like a more technical definition. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? I'm done. All right. Oh, someone said wait. Just a moment. I'm sorry about that, Lindsay. All right. Um, uh, okay, let me know when you're ready. Oh, this is the wrong board. <laughs> Sorry. There it is. OK. OK, let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? All right. So now I want us to take a moment and think about the domain and range here. Now, I'm using the output of f as the input of g in this situation. Now that means that that uh, the range of f effectively is restricting the domain of g. Like, say that g is a function for which I can plug in any number, but maybe f only gives me positive numbers. So our end result is going to be a more restricted version than just G on its own. Anyway, now let's give the more formal definition and look at a few examples.
So let's let f and g be two functions such that the domain of f overlaps the range of g. <laughs> the composition f of g denoted, and this is our notation, is defined by the rule f of g of x is equal to f of g of x. In other words, to compose two functions, you simply plug one function into another. So this notation here, composition notation, this is just showing us, this is telling us what is being plugged into what. G is being plugged into F. So this is F is a function of G, which itself is a function of X. All right. The domain consists of all values of x such that g of x, that is the output g of x, is in the domain of f. In other words, In other words, our domain is going to be the numbers that, when you plug them into our inner function g, will spit out values that we're allowed to plug into our outer function f. All right. So let's give it a try. Now it's actually pretty simple. If we are given that f of x equals, let's say, x squared minus 1, and g of x equals the square root of x. Let's go ahead and find g of f. and f of g.
Well, g of f, that is going to be um, uh, g is our outer function and f is our inner function. So g of f, goth. is going to be equal to, so g's on the outside, and we're plugging f into the inside. So that is going to be g of f of x. Our outer function is the square root of the inner of our input. Our input here, we're plugging this into this function is x squared minus 1. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Now, there is a restriction on the domain, but uh, we don't really have too much. Ha we're, we're running low on time, so we'll get to that if we in a moment if we have the time. So, what about fog? What is f of g of x? Well, our outer function is f. Our inner function is g. So that's going to be f of g of x. Our outer function is f but we're plugging g or we're plugging in the square root of x in for x. So this is going to give us I should have color coded the inner and outer functions. Oh well, not much I can do about it now. Square root of x squared minus 1. What's the square root of x squared? Well, the square root of anything squared is just that thing. So we end up with a fully simplified x minus 1. Now, there are some restrictions on the domain here, but we don't really have time to go into it, so we'll go ahead and leave it there. So today, we learned how we can combine functions together. We saw that we can combine functions algebraically using algebra. We can add, subtract, multiply, divide. And we can also compose functions. That is, we can plug one function into another. For this function, we are plugging f into g. So our outer function is the square root of something, and that something is going to be x squared minus 1. That's g of f. f of g is going to be something squared minus 1, where that something is going to be square root of x. All right, so uh, before I let you guys go, there is one last thing I wanted to bring up, which is that uh, the book situation. Now, uh, we just got all of our books, uh, we got all of our books barcoded and uh, barcoded and scanned into the system so that, uh, so we'll be able to get those books sent home to people soon. Now, I need to count our books, make sure that I have enough for enough for everyone. Uh, if we don't have enough for everyone, then they'll just have to be distributed on a first come first serve basis and I'll scan sections of the book and post those onto Canvas. So uh, I need to talk to our librarian today to uh, figure out how we're doing to figure out how we can do that and how I can get books to you. And I will keep you guys in the loop and I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. So, I get so uh, there will be a check for understanding on this. I feel like you could also use some more examples of function composition. So I'll see if I can find like a Khan Academy video or something 
uh, with some more examples of function composition. And I'm also going to give you a check for understanding. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Um, uh, and I'll see you around. See you, Mr. Lero. Have a good day. Bye. Have a nice day. See ya. Have a good day.